This is a picture test in practical anatomy of the upper limb. You may use the video as a revision for the topic or as a self-assessment tool. For the purpose of self-assessment, you may pause the video and spend your own time to read the question and come up with the answer. Then replay the video to confirm your answer by listening to the comments and explanations. Now I will deal with the shoulder region and axilla. Which numbered area represents the attachment of the muscle indicated by the arrow? This muscle is located on the lateral thoracic wall. It was given its name because of the saw-toothed appearance of its origin. In Latin, serratus means a saw. You can see here that the muscle has digitations by which it arises from the ribs. The muscle forms a flat sheet that's attached to the anterior aspect of the medial border of the scapula. So the numbered area that represents the attachment of the muscle is 4. The other attachments are 1 for pectoralis minor muscle attached to the coracoid process, 2 for trapezius muscle attached to the spine of the scapula, 3 is for the omohyoid attached to the superior border close to the suprascapular notch, and 5 is for subscapularis attached to the subscapular fossa. Which of the muscles is a member of the rotator cuff group of muscles? Subscapularis, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor form what is termed the rotator cuff, since these muscles, except supraspinatus, are rotators of the humerus, and since they form a musculotendinous cuff around the shoulder joint, hence the name rotator cuff. The tone of these muscles is very important for holding the head of the humerus into the glenoid fossa of the scapula, so they are important in the stability of the shoulder joint. The muscles shown here are A is the deltoid, B is the infraspinatus, C is teres major, and D is the long head of triceps. So a member of the rotator cuff group of muscles is B infraspinatus. A powerful abductor of the shoulder joint is A, that is the deltoid muscle, particularly the middle fibers of deltoid. Number three, which of the muscles is attached to the infraglenoid tubercle of the scapula? That is the long head of triceps, which is attached to the infraglenoid tubercle of the scapula outside the capsule of the joint, in contrast to the long head of biceps brachii, which is attached to the supraglenoid tubercle of the scapula inside the capsule of the joint. Number four, which of the muscles is supplied by the axillary nerve? It is the deltoid A, which is supplied by the axillary nerve. The nerve axillary nerve also supplies teres minor, which is not marked in this specimen. Which of the muscles is 5 supplied by the suprascapular nerve? This is the infraspinatus muscle B, which is supplied by the suprascapular nerve. The suprascapular nerve supplies both supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscles. Identify the ligaments A to C. A is the coracoacromial ligament. It is considered as an extrinsic ligament of the glenohumeral joint. This strong ligament links the coracoid process and acromion process together. The three structures, the coracoid, coracoacromial ligament, and the acromion, they form the coracoacromial arch. This arch prevents the superior displacement of the shoulder joint. The tendon of supraspinatus muscle passes beneath the ligament, separated from it by a bursa. B and C, together, constitute the coracoclavicular ligament, which is a very strong ligament that unites the coracoid process to the undersurface of the clavicle. It consists of two ligaments, the conoid and trapezoid ligament. The conoid ligament, C, is an inverted cone, whose base is attached to the conoid tubercle on the inferior surface of the clavicle, 
and its apex is attached to the base of the coracoid process of the scapula. The trapezoid ligament B is attached to the trapezoid line on the clavicle and on the superior surface of the coracoid process, thus it lies almost horizontal. The coracoclavicular ligament is largely responsible for suspending the scapula and upper limb from the clavicle. Name the joints formed at A and B. What is the type and variety of each? First, we have to differentiate between the medial and lateral ends of the clavicle. The medial end is rounded while the lateral end is flat. So the joints are the sternoclavicular joint at A. This is a saddle type of synovial joint between the sternal end of the clavicle on one side and the manubrium of the sternum and first costal cartilage on the other side. Unlike many other synovial joints, the articular surface here is covered with fibrocartilage instead of hyaline cartilage and it is divided into two compartments by an articular disc. The joint B is at the acromioclavicular joint. This joint, the acromioclavicular, is a plain type of synovial joint between the acromial end of the clavicle or the lateral end of the clavicle and the acromion of the scapula. Again, here the articular surfaces are covered with fibrocartilage instead of hyaline cartilage and they are separated by an incomplete wedge-shaped articular disc. Identify the muscle A. What is its nerve supply and what is its action on the shoulder joint? The muscle is teres minor. It is supplied by the axillary nerve, similar to deltoid. As you can see here, this muscle, teres minor, extends from the lateral margin of the scapula to the inferior facet on the greater tubercle of the humerus. It is thus a lateral rotator of the shoulder joint. Remember that it's a member of the rotator cuff muscles. Note here in this dissection that teres major, the bigger muscle that arises inferior to minor, disappears distally because it passes to the front of the humerus. But the whole extent of teres minor can be seen because the muscle remains in the back and is attached to the back of the greater tubercle of the humerus. Identify the muscles A and B. What is the action of each on the scapula? Muscle A is pectoralis minor and as you can see here it's a small triangular muscle that is largely covered by pectoralis major which is reflected away in this dissection. The muscle stabilizes the scapula and can pull it forwards against the thoracic wall, what we call protraction of the scapula. The muscle is elongated in full abduction of the arm and its subsequent contraction assists gravity in depressing and medially rotating the scapula to the rest position. The muscle has a rather unimportant function that can be replaced by other muscles, but the muscle should be remembered as a landmark in the axillary region as it is used to divide the axillary artery into three parts for descriptive purposes. The other muscle is serratus anterior muscle, which extends from the upper eight ribs to the anterior surface of the medial border of the scapula. You can see here the serrated appearance of the muscle. It protracts the scapula, hence it's also called boxer's muscle, and laterally rotates it so that the glenoid cavity faces upwards. This is important in abducting the shoulder above 90 degrees. Which of the muscle attachments A to D around the shoulder joint is intraarticular? A is the lateral border of the acromion where deltoid muscle is attached. B is the supraclinoid tubercle of the scapula where the long head of biceps brachii is attached. It is attached within the capsule of the shoulder joint. The other attachment, C, is the tip of the coracoid process which provides origin for coracobrachialis and the short head of biceps. And D is the infraglenoid tubercle which provides origin for the long head of triceps. All the muscles A, C and D are attached outside the capsule of the shoulder joint. Identify the muscle 
what is its nerve supply and what is its action on the shoulder joint. The muscle is subscapularis. It occupies the subscapular fossa, medial to it, serratus anterior, is attached to the front of the medial border of the scapula. These two muscles, serratus anterior and subscapularis, thus separate the scapula from the thoracic cage. Subscapularis is supplied by the upper and lower subscapular nerves from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. And the tendon of subscapularis passes in front of the shoulder joint, separated from the shoulder joint by the subscapular bursa to be attached to the lesser tubercle of the humerus. Thus the muscle is an obvious medial rotator of the humerus and remember that it's a member of the rotator cuff group of muscles. Name three muscles attached to the process A. What is the nerve supply of each? Process A is the coracoid process. It is named so because it looks like a crow's beak. The three muscles attached to the coracoid process are pectoralis minor, attached anteriorly, it is triangular in shape, and then at the tip of the coracoid process there is a common origin of two muscles. The two muscles are the short head of biceps and coracobrachialis. Regarding the nerve supply, pectoralis minor is supplied by the medial and lateral pectoral nerves. Biceps brachii is supplied by the musculocutaneous nerve together with coracobrachialis. Which bone is fractured in this patient? This is a fractured clavicle. The clavicle is the most commonly fractured bone in the body. The clavicle transmits forces from the upper limb to the axial skeleton. Thus, a fall on the shoulder or hand may cause force transmission to the axial skeleton greater than the strength of the clavicle. And this indirect force is the usual cause of the fracture. Since the bone is subcutaneous throughout its length, then the deformity is easily shown. The common site of fracture is at the junction of the middle and lateral thirds of the clavicle. This is the weakest point and it is shown here. In spite of the superficial location of the clavicle, just beneath the skin, piercing of the skin by the osseous spicules, in other words, a compound fracture, is rather rare. This is attributed to the subcutaneous location of platysma. These are the fibers of platysma running to the neck and up into the lower border of the mandible. So platysma allows the skin to move freely over the clavicle and thus protecting the skin and preventing the bony fragments from piercing it. Fibers A and B are parts of the same muscle. Identify the muscle and its two heads. What is the action of the muscle on the shoulder joint? The muscle is pectoralis major. As you can see it here, this is a large triangular muscle. In some textbooks it is described as fan-shaped, referring to the hand fan and it is attached by means of two heads. A clavicular head, which arises from the medial half of the clavicle, and a sternocostal head. And this is attached to the anterior surface of the sternum and upper six costal cartilages, head B, while head A is the clavicular head. The muscle fibers, as you can see here, converge to be inserted into the lateral lip of the intertubercular groove of the humerus. It is thus an adductor and medial rotator of the arm at the shoulder joint. The clavicular head alone flexes the humerus as well. Which vein is being catheterized in this patient? This is the subclavian vein passing underneath the clavicle as it passes on the upper border of the first rib in front of scalinous anterior muscle. 